and bam. All right, there we go. Just like that, we have a center console. First center console I've ever built. Uh, give you guys kind of a look at it. I went with the more squared off, edgy kind of look there. Um, obviously, it's not all welded out. It's just tacked together right now. Um, so once I get it all welded out, it'll look, you know, should look pretty cool with the, you know, the big, big weld beads all the way on every edge. Uh, but yeah, looks, looks nice. So like I said, this is, uh, that's what we started out with. And that's what we ended up with. So yeah, I think it'll, I think it'll work really good. Uh, I think it ended up being like 43 inches tall, uh, 25 inches wide and something like, like 18 inches deep. So, um, it looks really proportionate to the boat. Very happy how it turned out. Um, like I said, we've got our, uh, our gear shift right there. And then, uh, you know, the steering wheel with the hydraulic pump there. And like I said, we'll have some gauges and some uh, switch panels and things go up there. But yeah, anyway. So that is the, uh, that's the center console. So that, that's cool. Um, so now that I got the center console built, uh, now I know exactly how much aluminum I have left. Everything else is super easy to figure because it's basically squares. Um, so what I'm going to do now is, now that I've got that set, now I'm going to start taking the floor back out. Um, you can see I've got the, the floor in here, but I've got I want to access that storage compartment uh, underneath there. I want to cut out for that, and then I need to start cutting out for that fuel tank because I'm going to isolate that uh, while I have all the sheets out. I'm going to make a chase from the motor up into the center console here. Um, we're going to be able to cut out the back of the center console there, uh, as well as some of the floor here to where I can access that and I can have some, some extra pieces. There's no need for me to, to have all that welded in. Um, but yeah, that's going to end up getting welded right to the uh, right to the the deck and the floor. Everything's just going to get welded together. So. Uh, be really strong and then like I said I'll, I'm gonna weld uh, the console down to the floor uh, the console itself I think I'm gonna hate myself if I don't go ahead and cut out a hole in the front there to access uh, that'll be some pretty nice dry storage you know throw a backpack or or something there uh, and then put a hinge on that you know probably like a like an 18 by 18 hole there all my batteries are gonna be down low um, you know in this this well here so there won't be anything in there but uh, that'll also be my access point uh, to get to all my electrical as well because all my bus bars and, and fuse rails and everything else are going to be inside that center console uh, I welded in some angle on the inside of that that center console so where I could you know mount everything but we're gonna have a lot of stuff coming in we got hydraulic lines and gauges and there's just a lot of stuff coming in there so anyway a lot of the other stuff is going to be run through the gunnel chase here um but i i do want to build a chase in to the floor uh you know and then like i said we plumb up for future depth finders and everything else but yeah there we go center console um first one i ever built pretty happy with it i like how it turns out super ergonomic and that is what i was going for wasn't really going for anything else other than ergonomics and i didn't want water to stand anywhere on it so uh it's got the same pitch there as there uh a slight slope there so where water will drain off you know you can set your phone up there and uh, then gauge clusters are there this will be we can set a, a depth finder there or more than likely i'm going to have a light bar set there since that's the highest point in the boat uh, and this boat's going to be ran a lot at night so anyway start marking out ripping out the floor um and uh and getting going with that uh like i said a lot of work we're with the exception of just decking everything we're kind of to that point now where a lot of the work you don't see if that makes sense it's like all down low and it's it's all super important but it's not work that uh you know you can you can really see um so anyway running chases getting getting wires ran cables everything else we got to plumb for this uh we gotta get everything ready for this kicker motor over here. So yeah, a lot of stuff yet left to do, but I'm happy I got the console out of the way. Like I said, it, it tells me how much aluminum I have left, and that is big. Uh, so anyway, that's that. We're gonna start pulling this floor out, marking things out, cutting some holes. We're gonna do some major cutting here. Um, 
and uh, and get some things figured out. But yeah, console. All right. Anyway, got the floor lined out. Very happy with that. And then I came back here and I got the live well uh, all cut in. So this was the original front live well, um, and it, man, it just fit, just fit perfect. So uh, I actually cut it all into this uh, this center area. Uh, and before you keyboard warriors go at me for, oh, you're losing structural integrity of the back of the boat. Well, that's the transom way back there. Uh, this is just really nothing more than a step. Uh, also, I left the angles on it. This giant piece of plastic is going to get bolted in. As well as there's going to be aluminum that's going to be welded in all the way across the front to cap that off. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna make it stronger than it was to begin with. That being said, I have now been from the front to the back end of this tracker boat. And you know, I know tracker gets a lot of crap for being cheaply made boats. I've done it myself for years, right? Um, and I've seen it in the last, I'm gonna say 10 years, eight to 10 years where I've seen the quality is like, eh, in 1998 they were building these boats right this boat is built heavy and it is built right there is nothing i mean there is welds where there needs to be welds there's bracing where there needs to be bracing i am very very impressed with this uh you know for a commercially available boat you know this isn't a uh you know a custom boat by any means i mean it's going to be after i'm done with it but yeah i'm, I'm actually very impressed with it so okay so, like I said, we got the live well cut in here. Um, I had to move some stuff around here. I'll show you. So, that's where the old fuel fill was. I think that's dumb. I don't know why manufacturers do not put the fuel fill on the driver's side. So, whenever you pull up to the gas pump, you fill your truck and you fill your boat all in one shot without having to reach a cord. So, anyway, um, that's going to get filled and welded in place as well as those were the uh, battery cables so all that's going to end up coming over here in a pocket in this corner and get like a little rubber boot up high not down low like how that is i'm going to mount it up high so if you would get water coming in it's not going to splash over it's going to be mounted up high probably on that angle or vertical somewhere because i got a lot more stuff that's going to come in with this kicker motor uh, but anyway, I'm going to cap that off and then we'll move that fuel fill and fuel line uh, over into that corner. Uh, I just got the fuel line run down through that center scupper hole right now. But it's going to end up over there because there's going to be a hatch there with a, a water separator in there. So we'll replumb all that as needed. But yeah, anyway, that's... Uh, Quite a little bit of progress there for just a couple hours. Uh, really see this part coming together. Uh, pretty happy with that. I'm gonna have to order some fuel line uh, and some different things like that. But I got the I got the live well cut in, so I'm happy with that. Uh, I'm still waiting on hinges. They haven't showed up yet. Um, All right, so there we go. We got the motor hanging from my trusses. <laughs> Seems to be a common occurrence around here. Uh, anyway, there we go. 150 horse hanging from the trusses. Got it separated from the transom. And the reason it's separated from the transom is because we are throwing the big jack plate on. So this is one of the, uh, you know, this jack plate in culmination with the reverse chines is what is going to really make this boat kind of propel or excel or whatever you want to say in shallow water. Um, jack plates are awesome uh, for shallow water performance. So anyway, got it separated. We're going to slip that in there. First things first, though, going to clean up uh, a little bit back there, give it a little fresh coat of paint. And then the one thing that's kind of interesting about the way Tracker designed this transom is they, they left this open here. And you can see uh, over the years it had cracked right there. Uh, and somebody had attempted to weld it back and it has cracked again. So that's telling me there is some stress there. Uh, there's going to be a lot more stress because I'm going to hang this big uh, 150 here another 8 inches back. So a lot of leverage. So we're going to dress this up uh, and address this real quick too. We're going to go ahead and clean this up and I'm actually going to weld a piece of 3 16 back in here and tie this piece back into the transom. Um, I, that it just make me sleep better at night. So anyway, that's what we're gonna do. 
clean that sucker up just a little bit um, for a 25 year old motor pretty good looking motor here runs strong so these old two strokes are about bulletproof but anyway here's the uh, Here's the new jack plate. This is a uh, Bob's Machine jack plate. This is the same brand of jack plate that I've been running on my big blue boat for five years. Uh, this is an 8-inch offset, so the further back you can get from the boat, the cleaner water you're going to get into, which really allows you to run that sucker higher and, and kind of gain the most performance out of it. Um, with my big blue boat, I run a 4-inch jack plate uh, because I've got the tiller handle, right? And I you know, I, I want to have, have the tiller handle. This doesn't really matter. I can go pretty pretty far back. So, got a really good deal on this 8-inch uh, jack plate. Uh, so, we're going to go ahead and throw that on there. This is a unique one compared to the one I have in my blue boat. The one in my blue boat actually has a, uh, a pump and everything that's separate. This actually has everything incorporated in the jack plate. So, all you got to do, instead of running hydraulic hoses and everything, uh, you know to a separate pump which is what I have to do in my blue boat this is just a, a one plug and play wire done so kind of cool I don't think they can actually get all that in the four inch jack plate or at least maybe it wasn't available um, you know whenever I bought mine either way um, it's a big old hunk of aluminum you know 80 some odd pounds I think this thing weighs or, or real close to it it's a big chunk but uh, this thing will lift the motor uh, running at wide open throttle and it'll raise it six inches in about three seconds or four seconds or something. I don't know what the specs are, but anyway, like I said, they work real good. And this is already having a step back in it. You know, you can see the V right there. We're already almost a foot back. Uh, and then we're going to go an additional eight, eight inches back. So hopefully we're going to get into some good clean water that's not created by that V pushing through. And uh, really allow this prop to, to bite in, uh, you know, whenever this is in the raised position. So, anyway, that's what I'm working on now. Uh, anyway, gonna, gonna dress that up, clean it up, get that welded up, and then we're gonna get this, uh, this motor mounted and bolted back on. And then uh, at the front floor in the deck of the boat, and, and you know, we're gonna start rigging. That's, that's kind of where we're at at this point. Once I do this, uh, we gotta do the kicker motor yet but uh the big motor will be about ready to go so anyway that's what we're working on i gotta sneeze as soon as i turn the camera on <coughs> okay all right y'all so i had a good run tonight uh i got a lot done uh i, I worked about six and a half seven hours tonight though after work so it's early it's late whatever you would call it but got a lot done uh, let me show you what we got going on so far here. So, so I got the front deck all cut in. Um, it's cut in. I still got to cut out for the hatch openings and the hinges, but it's all sitting in there. So that's awesome. Makes this thing look just huge. Uh, also got the back all cut in. And tacked in it's not all welded out yet um, I still got to grind out the floor and then um, weld in the sides there I think I'm gonna fully weld the bottom of it and then really heavily stitch weld the top I don't know if I'm gonna fully weld the top yet um, but anyway got the whole thing well or all the floor cut in uh, there I only have to cut in that piece that piece and then the front right here and that's gonna be until uh, I, I got to do the live oil yet, but man, this thing is, it's really coming together, and it's looking like a boat now. Uh, back into the motor here, we got to deal with all this at some point. We can start pulling that, uh, but yeah, check that out. So that's cool. Um, got 3 16 bracing in. I didn't go all the way to the bottom because... Uh, I didn't want a crack to start, you know, where the, the joint was, uh, as well as I didn't want to hold water. Um, you can see that, so all the water there um, will just drain right out. So, uh, that's plenty plenty strong what it is, but yeah, look at that massive jack plate sitting on there. That sucker looks cool. Um, I need to put a tape and actually see how far from the transom. I think we're getting close to 20 inches from the transom to the motor mounted and then you know you obviously you got more to the prop so we are going to stick this motor way back there um so i don't know hopefully that combined with my reverse chines is going to make this boat run 
really, really flat. That's the whole idea, is to make this thing run super flat. I think I've got enough horsepower here. This is a 152 stroke. The boat's gonna be light enough. Hopefully, hopefully it's all gonna work out. I don't know. We're gonna find out next week. But uh, yeah, anyway, got that. I uh, got the hydraulic steering. Tore off the old cable steer. Got the hydraulic steering ram uh, mounted on to the motor, so it's ready for uh, for uh, hoses and everything. Like I said, all this cabling is gonna get a big hole cut right here, and uh, that's where it's all gonna access. So we got to deal with that whole mess of the stuff there. But it's gonna be a lot easier than what it looks like. It looks horrible now, but anyway, man, I tell you what, got a lot done tonight. Um, I've been working on this boat now for almost two weeks straight after work um, from about the time I get home until 11.30 midnight every night. So getting close, getting really close, trying to knock it out. Um, it's getting warm. Super excited. It's really coming together now. Um, and it's going to be cool. If this sucker works out like I think it, if it performs with my modifications that I did like I think it is, this sucker's going to be cool. So. All right, y'all, it's, uh, I don't know what time is it, 12.30, I got to get up at uh, quarter till five tomorrow, I'll be at work, so I'm going to go in, take a shower, do her all again tomorrow, but we're getting her.